Amen. You should see what it looks like from up here. Even from back there, man, you guys are here. You're showing up. It's not raining or anything. You got yourselves out of bed. You got those kids checked in. It's just like we are women who are studying God's word. Congratulations. We get to be together today. How exciting is that? We're going to have a really great great day today because now finally, after a few weeks of introduction and overview, we're into like three verses. How's that? Fifteen questions. Don't be deceived. All the lessons don't have fifteen questions. <laughs> but I hope that uh, you have just got to dive into those words. Remember when we were talking about inductive? It's like word for word, verse for verse. We are digging into God's word. And one of my hopes and dreams for us as a Bible study group is that we will be women who have a good grip on God's word, right? We want to be able to have a grip on God's word. So to have a good grip on God's word, here's five things that are helpful for you. Number one, we need to hear God's word, right? That means we go to church or we listen to the message and we hear somebody tell us what is in God's word. And that helps us to get a grip on God's word. But if we are only relying on hearing, we are not really going to have much of a grip on God's word because we're only going to be hearers. So secondly, what we want to do is we want to read God's word. When we read God's word, it helps us see the words for ourselves on the page and hear from the Holy Spirit as we're reading. And that can kind of help us to get a grip on God's word. But I'm only holding this up with two fingers. There's no way I'm going to have a grip on God's word just having somebody tell me about it and having just reading it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to study. And that's what we are doing in this Bible study. We are studying. We're looking at definitions. We're looking at cross-references. We're reading commentaries. We're digging in to study God's word. And that's like having three fingers on this. I can almost hold it up. But I still don't have a grip on God's word because I want to add one more thing. I want to add memorization. Now, memorization is everybody's favorite part of getting into the Bible. And we want to memorize scripture because when we memorize scripture, that helps us to get a grip on God's word. But not quite because we actually want to meditate on what the scripture that we're memorizing. If we have God's word and his this in our minds, and we can meditate on it when we're driving down the road. We can meditate on it when we're falling asleep. We can meditate on God's word, and that will help us hearing, reading, studying, memorizing, and meditating. That'll help us to really be women of God who have a grip on God's word. So I don't know if you noticed, um, but this year we actually have some verses to memorize in your book. Have you seen those? They're on page eight, just in case I pulled my page out. Actually, they're a really great, they're a really great section of verses. I want to read these to us. I want you just to listen to me read this and imagine what it would be like if you had this memorized and you were thinking about this when you drove down the road. For this reason, do you notice I don't have it memorized? Just saying. <laughs> For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. What if we prayed this for every kid in our family, for our husbands, for our grandmas, for whoever we know? What if we, this was our prayer? So that's why we picked this to be a good verse to memorize. And I'd really love for you to just take that next step and start trying. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that, I don't know about you, but this page in my notebook, I might see, you know, do when I do my lesson, I may not even see it. So I'd like to encourage everybody to just take a note card sometime during this week and write this out. In the past, we have given you note cards with them all typed up, like flowers along the edge, and they look so pretty. 
but I think you would get more out of it if you wrote it out yourself. So this week, your challenge then is to take these verses and write them on a note card or two or three and get them around your house and get them somewhere where you can see them so that every day you can start reading them and praying for somebody. And hopefully by the end of the year, every single person in here will have these memorized. Anybody going to try? Going to try. Okay. Is anybody too old for that? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's too old. We're going to do this. Okay. So I got some announcements for us. Got some really fun announcements. Harvest Moon Bazaar, it is coming up. And it'll be a fun time to show up for, and it'll be a great fun time to help out with. So there's still a few spots. They're getting filled up. So you want to hurry back there and sign yourself up to help because there's only a few spots left. And then you get to come and serve. And when you're serving, you're hanging around with people. And then you get to buy something, and it's going to really be a great time. So come to the Harvest Moon and uh, sign up to help. Fall Fest then is this weekend, and Fall Fest is a great time to invite your neighbors with kids. I was talking to somebody this week. I have never been to Fall Fest, but I don't have any kids that I'm bringing to Fall Fest. So if you've got kids or grandkids, come, let them have all that candy that you guys are bringing. It's still time. You can still bring some more candy, and uh, I think you could bring it all the way up until Sunday morning. They're collecting that candy, so bring candy. And then uh, Rainy and her team are collecting for the blessing boxes. And you saw that blessing box back there last week, and they're collecting all kinds of things. The sheet, the yellow sheet of what to bring is still available. And they're putting them in those big blue bins. They try to get these to the, to the servicemen around Christmas time. So that's a really cool thing that you can, oh, that you can uh, donate to, too. And one other thing, just tomorrow night, the Garden of Hope, a uh, nonprofit is having their banquet, and it'll be here at the church. And if you're interested in participating and helping out or participating in coming to that, I just wanted to get, get you uh, to know about that, and you can check into that. Tina Fortin leads that. Is Tina here? Is there a uh, QR code? No? Nope. Well, uh, you can go to that uh, website if you want. And if you don't, if don't remember it at the end, just come ask and we'll let you know. But they still have like 12 spots for that. That's going to be a great night, a dinner, and learning about the Garden of Hope uh, ministry. Uh, two more. Sorry about that. Now, if your group meets in the downstairs, the campground, the beach, whatever those four rooms are, raise your hand. Okay, got an announcement just for you guys. And I forgot to tell the leaders today. Sorry about that. Um, so the bathroom down there. <laughs> so we can't have kids and adults in the downstairs bathroom at the same time. But I was really going to bat for you, just so you know. And I'm like, these people are old. They can't walk all the way from down there all the way over here. So we have a compromise with the bathroom downstairs. Okay, here's the compromise. You can use the bathroom downstairs, that's in Mark Kids, only from 1020, which is about when we get done here, till 1040, which is giving you some wiggle room to get down there. 1020 to 1040. After that, then that bathroom is a kid's bathroom. So if you're in the middle of the group and you have to go to the bathroom, the closest one for downstairs is at the top of the stairs and down that back hallway. There's two bathrooms down that back hallway. They're private. So you can just get in and get out, and they're nice and quiet. You don't have to listen to anybody else. Uh, so, uh, so if you have to go besides 1020 to 1040, you got to come up the stairs or up the elevator and go down that hallway or all the way over to this one. Sorry about that. That's the best I could do. But they're really careful about not having adults and kids crossing paths in the same bathroom, and you can understand that. I think there's like 40-some homeschool kids that meet down there. I was like, well, we have 80-some women that meet down there. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a compromise. Uh, one more thing. I don't know if you noticed, but in your notebooks this year, we don't have any prayer pages and we don't have any lesson notes. Yes, I've been missing those, right? So I've been to a couple of groups, though, where they have, I think on their own or somebody, they brought like a little uh, journal which is kind of cool for a prayer journal. You can keep track of all your prayer requests through the year, and you can keep track of the answers to prayer. So I dug this one out of my shelf because I'm like, I don't have any room to write down all these prayer requests. Um, 
But if you don't have that or if you don't want to do this, uh, Debbie printed off some prayer pages and some no lesson notes, and they're available in the back. You can grab some of those today. But it is really cool. Praying for each other is one of the important parts of this Bible study, and it's really cool to have a record of something that you prayed for somebody, maybe even all year long, and then got to see how the Lord answered the prayer. Whew, that's all I have. <sighs> I'm going to pray for us. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us together. God, we want to be women of the word. We want to know you. We want to read and hear and study and memorize and meditate on your word. So I pray that you'd implant it deep, deep, deep in our hearts, that you'd grow us up in you, in the fullness of you, to know the length and depth and breadth and height of you. So Lord, let that be the cry of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm excited to have Christy come for us. Do you guys know Christy? She hey, on staff. She works in the the, the discipleship uh, department. department. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you've been to a welcome lunch, you've probably seen Christy. Mm -hmm. She also leads a Bible study group of high school. Just race, graduated. Just grad yeah. yeah so, so just beginning college and adulthood. So it's yeah. super fun. We're glad to have them doing this study. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. There's a lot of people here this morning, which is pretty cool. Um, okay. Quick question. How many, how, okay, how many moms of like, uh, I don't know, like eight to teenage peoples do we have in here? I guess I could go lower than that. Okay, how many of your kids play sports? How many of you love watching your kids play sports? Okay, I am a total crazy sports mom. Um, I kind of lose myself. <laughs> and my family makes fun of me a little bit for it because it's like, I become this whole different person, and I just don't care. I just don't care. I'm just clapping. I am shouting. The poor people next to me, I'm like slapping their backs. Like, do you see that? Oh, my word. And I just can't help it. I just love watching them play. Uh, my son Jonas plays football. My daughter plays volleyball. My boys both wrestle. And I'm not kidding. I get so into it that my body starts moving like as if what I'm going to do is impacting what they do. It doesn't. Um, and then on the drive home, I get to like rehash with them all the things. And it's like, oh my word, Joe, that tackle. I mean, that guy did not see that coming. And like as if they didn't know. Uh, so I, I love that. I love being able to express just this like, ah! I think God created us to do that. You know, there's like extra, okay, I have tried to be the quiet mom. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> like it honestly is like torture because God created us. You get this like extra sense of joy by letting it out, you know. Um, so in this passage, I feel like that's what Paul is doing. It's like, here he is, this guy is chained to a guard in uh he's under house arrest and yet he like cannot contain himself as he is like just gushing just absolutely gushing about who god is and what he has done let's go ahead and read this passage real quick if this will work it might not i'll let you guys figure that out okay it says blessed be the god and father you hear that blessed Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, oh, there we go, okay. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Do you feel that? Like Paul has this fire in him and I think he wants the, the faithful saints in Ephesus to catch this fire and I'm hoping this morning that we will catch this fire. That we would praise his glorious grace. Because sometimes, sometimes it's a lot easier for me to praise my kids than to read this and go, wow. 
Sometimes my heart's dull. Sometimes I'm doubtful. Sometimes I am just unaware. I am unaware. So my hope is that through understanding this together, guys, that we would even get into a habit of walking in them and then praising him for it because he is worthy. All right, so let's look at verse 3 together. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. So this verse has three different variations of the word bless. And yes, we're going to the Greek because I'm a nerd. And that's okay. Uh, So the first one is really interesting to me. Um, It's when he says, blessed be the God and Father. It it is, you you, uh, wow, can't read, eulogitas. And it's really interesting about it is that it's only said to God. It is reserved only for him, and it means to praise God and adore him, to praise and adore him. And I love this because if you look at the structure of the passage, verses three and verse six, they are bookends of praise. And then in the middle, it's why. So you have praise, praise, and everything in between is this is what God has done. And this this tells me that while it is important to discover who we are in these verses, it's even more important that we discover who God is in these verses. So we adore him, so that we praise him. I love this. Got questions, great resource for us. Um, Defines praise this way. Praise is the joyful recounting of all God has done for us. It is closely intertwined with thanksgiving as we offer back to God appreciation for his mighty works on our behalf. Praise is usually presented as boisterous, joyful, and uninhibited. It is uninhibited. It makes me think of David, you know, back in 2 Samuel when he brings the ark back to Jerusalem and he is just dancing before the Lord. He is uninhibited and is a beautiful thing. Hebrews 13 says, Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. So we must bless, praise, and acknowledge him for his glorious grace. The next word in, in bless, it's like who, who has blessed us in Christ. That Greek word is eulageo. And this is only spoken when God is speaking to man, which is really interesting to me. And it is for God to have spoken favorably to man for their happiness. For your happiness. Happiness is not a godly word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. God is happy. How amazing is that? The next word is eulagia, and it's a commendation and praise. And in fact, it is a concrete benefit from God. So um, imagine this. Okay, and can you tell where, what English word we get from these? Eulogy. Yes. When people are giving eulogies, usually they're not saying bad things about people. <laughs> right? Because that would be rude. Well, he was a piece of work. Um, <laughs> But the thing is, imagine this. We, with our mouths, we echo back to God the praise that he deserves because he speaks over you. He speaks over you. He wants your happiness. And it is a final word. It is what will be. I love the second Corinthians says this, for all The promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. God calls you loved. Amen. We utter our amen back to God. So all the blessings that we are about to dive in today and in the coming weeks, um, those are for those who trust in 
Jesus who are in Christ. To trust in Jesus means that you believe that Jesus died on the cross bearing your sins and your shame and that God the Father rose him up from the dead and that he is alive. He has conquered death and those who put their faith in him have eternal life starting now. So this is going to lay the groundwork for today and for the next few weeks. So we got to bless and praise God because he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Let's go ahead and look at um, verse 4. Even as, according to those blessings, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Now, everybody take a breath. (sighs) Okay, I'm going to talk about a not fun thing. Actually, it's really, really, really great but it's a little controversial. So I am gonna talk about the doctrine of election today. However, I want to be very clear and I wanna acknowledge that there are different views on this. There are people in this room that are gonna disagree with me, but in Christ, we are unified together and therefore, we're okay. We're okay, so bear with me and also, Um, If you have more questions about this afterwards, I uh, put together, just outside those doors, sitting on the table, there's some papers for you guys that has has verses with some of the views I'm presenting, but then also um, opposing views. And, And also a list of resources for further study, which I highly recommend you do because you need to do the study work. And, um, this is not a salvation issue that doesn't determine whether or not you are saved. Um, but it's for the praise of God's glory. So I recommend you have a look at that. Okay, so here we go. Here is uh, a definition for election. Wayne Grudem, uh, who's a lot smarter than me, he says this, the all, uh, wow, there we go. Election is an act of God before creation in which he chooses some people to be saved not on account of any foreseen merit in them, but only because of his sovereign good pleasure. Only because of his sovereign good pleasure. And we're going to walk through just a few verses that kind of describe what this is like. Um, this is 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 31. Paul says this, For consider your calling, brothers, Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So I would say the, the, the thing is, that there's plenty, of, we'll look at some more, but the thing is, it's about us not bringing anything to the table. Nothing. Like we have no, we have no reason to boast except for in Christ and in God pouring out his love upon us. John 15, 16, Jesus says, you did not choose me. Uh, where am I at? There we go. Okay, yep. Thank you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. That's Jesus talking. And then again, just a few verses later, he says this again, but I chose you out of this world. And you might be wondering, because I wonder the same thing, how does this actually work? Um, And I I found this really helpful quote. Um, It was really helpful. It's by this uh, doctor. His name's Dr. Daryl Bach. He's a New Testament scholar. And he says this, often election is portrayed as capricious, or like impulsive or unpredictable, but it is rooted in the character of a good God. What we describe as a process simply was an act emerging from his person and who he is. 
The openness of the gospel to any who will hear invites people into that goodness and grace of God. Another thought is important here. We tend to discuss all of this as an issue of sequence, but in God, before time, this program simply resides in his person and character. Our limited understanding of it has to rest there in who God is. It is a work of God rooted in his goodwill and the opportunity he provides for rescue and redemption. It just flows out of him. So I, I, I think that because we are finite, because we live in time, we imagine God going, okay, who am I going to choose? Who? You know what I mean? And, and I don't want to discount how much trust this takes. I don't. But we can see that we are chosen to be holy and blameless, and it's according to God's wisdom. It's according to his knowledge. Um, and I, I totally understand that this is hard. In fact, what's interesting is that the Bible also talks about our choosing. Jesus says, come to me all who labor and who are weary and, and I'm going to give you rest. He doesn't go, I'm going to make you come to me. That's what I'm going to do. And then there's, there's this thing of responsibility where Jesus says, or sorry, it was actually Paul who said this. If you, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's, that, that takes action. It's human responsibility as well. So he's inviting us to come, and yet he chooses. I have to be honest with you that I believe both are true, and I don't know how. It seems contradictory, and yet the thing is is that we are limited and we are finite in our capacity to really understand these things. And so, so many of this, you have to go, God, you know. You know, and I trust you. but I want to encourage you to diligently study and have unity with your sisters who think differently than you. We are one in Christ. But personally, I do believe that the scriptures do support election because frankly, he didn't have to. We were all dead in our sins. Dead people don't do a whole lot. They really don't. I mean, let me know if you've seen otherwise. But, but the thing is, he could have let everybody perish, and he would have been just and fair to do so. But instead, in love, he sent his son into the world to save rebellious people whom he chose. And I love this. Even when we read um, in this verse that we should be holy and blameless before him. Oh yeah, okay, making sure I'm on the right page here. Okay, even when we read that we should be holy and blameless before him, what I love about this is that God is the one making us holy, making us blameless, but it's like this continual process that God is habitually and continually making us holy and blameless. Isn't that so cool? I mean, it's so much grace. It is so much grace, and that's why Paul is freaking out. He did that? Are you kidding me? Oh, it's amazing. Okay, let's look at verse 5. You ready? In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Have you ever thought about that God could have just made us holy and blameless and stopped there? But then he was like, oh, and I'm going to make you my daughter. (laughs) So, so ridiculous. (laughs) I just, come on. I'm serious. Oh, man. So God showed us the immensity of his love toward us. In love, he predestined us for adoption. Do you guys... Mm, mm. Come on! It's amazing! Woo! Yes! Okay, listen to this. This is Daryl Bach again. He says, Adoption into sonship means we have become something we were not before. 
we have become part of a new family. Guys, we have become something we weren't before. So what were we before? I'm going to put a fun little list up here, but I'm going to read through the scriptures. In Luke 4, 18 through 19, Jesus declared why he came. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. John 8, says, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there's no truth in him. Romans 5.10, for if while we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, uh, how much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life? In Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, and following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Colossians 1.21 says that we were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. So prior to our adoption, guys, we are poor, captive, blind, oppressed, children of the devil, enemies of God, dead in sin, following Satan, wallowing in sin, and alienated from God. That's not good. And I, and I want to say this, this is a kind of a theme in Ephesians, this fact that we were children of the devil, he was a terrible father. He hates you. He hates me. He hates us still. In fact, I would say he probably hates us more. But do you remember what that was like? I know some of you came to Christ as a young child and maybe you really don't remember. But some of us didn't. We remember what it was like to be enslaved. To be oppressed. He, he's a terrible master. But praise be to God. He chose us in Christ and he adored adopted us. We have become what we once were not, and that is daughters of the king. And then when we live as we are, we praise our God's grace. Our adoption ought to permeate every facet of our lives because we have been given a new family name and a new identity. And I want to just say a few things about this is what is true about you. Remember, God has spoken this. He has spoken this. It is final. So this is some good news here. So daughters, you are loved by God. And I love this because this is an agape kind of love. And the, uh, the essence of agape is goodwill, benevolence, and willful delight in the object of love. You are willfully loved. You are the object of your father's delight. Amen. Daughters, oops, sorry. Daughters are free because of the father. Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave doesn't remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, amen, you are free indeed. And I love this so much. Okay, this is Colossians 2, 13 um, through 15. And you... And you, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. 
This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, and he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. Your being a daughter, <laughs> this is so, so ridiculous, it puts Satan to shame. He has triumphed over them. Whew, that's good stuff. Okay, and then daughters have access to the father, which is crazy. Old Testament was all about God's holiness, and you better be careful not to go into the presence of God. You better be pure. You better be holy. Accomplished in Jesus. So we get to march in boldly. We have our father's ear. Whew, so good. Okay, daughters. We are obedient, and we have the power through the Holy Spirit, but we are obedient to our Father. And this is such a privilege. Every time we walk out in obedience to our Father, it sings the praise of God, no matter where we are. So listen to him. Obey him. <clears throat> and then daughters live to glorify their Father. You you, you are carrying your dad's name wherever you go. And people see it. Do your neighbors see that in your life? Do your neighbors go, ah, you are not the same as me, but I want that. May it be so through the Spirit. So, and I want to say there's a lot more praiseworthy spiritual blessings as we're going to talk through in the next coming weeks. Uh, but guys, this is so much better than a sporting event. <laughs> this is so much better than a sporting event. We get to bless and praise God because he has spoken this final word over you that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You have been adopted. You have been chosen for his glorious grace to be praised. Amen? Amen. Whew. So I have a last thing, and it's kind of nerdy. Ways to praise. <laughs> okay, have you ever been worshiping, though? And people are like, amazing grace has me that we're not going to do that. We are going to praise the Lord loudly with our voice. We're going to get a little charismatic. We're going to lift our hands. Use your body. Use your voice. Use your life to praise the living God who calls you his daughter. We're going to practice that. Can you stand? Oh, praise. 
Lord God, we praise you and we worship you. You are worthy. You are high and lifted up, God. And you, you are holy, God. And we praise you that you have made a way for us to enter into the most holy place. That you have spoken blessing over us. Your final word. That you've chosen us and adopted us to be your girls. We love you. Bless these women today. Amen. 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 Have a good day, guys.